I've known you for a year, year and a half, um, done a little bit of reading um, about you the last few days. And what surprised me is you're not the typical dumb blonde. You've been to university, which means absolutely nothing these days because you could have done lesbian dance theory. But at university, you did Russian and Italian, which is a proper degree. It's an abs- it's, it's actually a proper degree. I had to do some proper reading. I had to, I mean, I had a bit of a head start with Russian because um, I went there as a kid because my dad's, uh, my dad was a spy, sorry, a diplomat. So, <laughs> so I went to the, um, you know, quite young, sort of in the, in the uh, mid 80s and then went back to Russia in the early 90s to study. So I'd already started learning Russian. And so when I, when I got to university, I was kind of, it was really to do with the literature and everything else, you know what I mean? And getting a degree, although I have to say I didn't do a lot of work. Well, what really impressed me is you're the only British comedian to go to Russia and do a comedy gig in Russian to the Russians. That's, that's correct. I did. I was at, I beat Eddie Izzard. And we all know Eddie Izzard's a real woman. But I beat... <laughs> I, I've not only beat him as a biological woman, but also because he wanted to do... Uh, comedy in Russian and I did that back in 2006 so I did part it was weird because the audience were partly English and Russian I had to do it in what I call Ringlish which is like a mixture of Russian and English it was just but it was such good fun I did three three nights sold out honestly the best even though I, I was followed to the venue I, I had I had um, definitely followed there because they were like what's this person doing mm, comedy Female comedian, what is going on? Что происходит? And um, so it was, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was a great time though. Very, very fun. No, excellent. I, I went to Moscow in 1984. It was a school trip. So I would have been about 15, I think. Um, height of, commu- of communism. Brezhnev was the president at the time. And that was a real experience at 15. Yes, and when I went, um, a li- I was a little bit younger, but I just remember um, first time I was in Moscow, because my dad, I mean, he went with Margaret Thatcher to Moscow and Harold Wilson. So he was at that level of sort of going and, you know, translating and just sort of being the the the, the, the Russian expert, if, if, if you will. But I remember me and my sister were in a hotel room, one of the big hotel rooms, and because we'd seen all the James Bond films, you know, where they where they look for bugs in the, you know, in the in the lampshade. I was up on the bed going, testing, testing, one, two, one. And a woman came in to clean the room that uh, they called the Dejournaya. And they, they, were, they were on every um, floor. Just basically, they were spies for the, the government. They were just there behind a desk. She came in and just looked at me and I was like, I'm just seeing whether the light works. And of course, she knew what I was on. And she could probably hear me going, testing, testing from her desk. So there was all that. There was all the, the, the spying going on. And I remember selling, uh, not selling, but I gave away uh, blue eyeliner because of the Princess Diana uh, craze in Russia at the time. Um, I, I, I had blue eyeliner and they were just like, oh my, blue, where, this is amazing. So I, I gave like a few people some eyeliners, some women. I got a train. I got a train from Budapest to Moscow, obviously a school trip. And on the train, I sold my Adam and the Ants t-shirt which cost me two pounds, cost me two pounds from Butlins. It had my name on the back, big picture of Adam Ant, and on the back it said Nick. And I sold that on the train going to Moscow. I actually took it off my, took it off and sold it for some silly sort of money. I mean, for a 15 year old kid, it cost two pounds. I think I got, if my memory serves me right, I think I sold it for like 14 pounds. 14, oh my God, so capitalism. You were basically introducing them to early capitalism, even back then. They were like, and uh, yeah, but it was, it was, uh, I, I have to say my memories are, uh, especially as obviously as I get, as I got older of, of being there were just um, the, when I was there in the early nineties, there was a food shortage. There were, uh, but I remember the family I was living with and they weren't particularly wealthy, but they were just, there was always food. They made sure. And I, I you know, they, they were just beyond generous, incredible people, um, the, the Russians, not obviously so much the government, but and I've I've been I've been I've been pilloried, I've been vilified by people for disagreeing with what's happening, uh, ramping up this war, and I've been called a Putin shagger, you know, a, 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 a whatever a, a apologist, and it's like no 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 I'm I'm not I'm really not I just know I just know what I'm talking about, 
and we shouldn't be we shouldn't be prodding the hornet's nest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been all over the world. I've been to I don't know how many countries. I've been, I've backpacked around the world a couple of times, and every country I go to, the people are lovely. Yes. In yes. general, people all over the world are just nice people. Are just nice people, yeah. And the and the Russian culture in particular, we have they have some of the greatest literature, music, uh, art, history. I mean, the history Russian. I remember when I was learning, I was like, oh my god, this this is an embarrassment of riches because you know you think of. Um, and actually, it's interesting because people always think of the, blaming the Russians for socialism and what we've got now. Actually, it, the French are very much to blame and the Americans, those two, the French, you know, the early sort of the, the intellectuals with their sort of like what we're seeing now, basically, sort of communitarianism. Um, yeah. So. So, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of sort of going on, you know, and I think. Our stance on Russia comes from they've been one of our oldest, biggest enemies, you know, going back hundreds of years. And that's something that's in our psyche. So we always look at the great bear and go enemy like we do with the French. Our, the French is the biggest enemy because we've been fighting them for a thousand years. So yes. all that is although, ingrained in our culture. In our culture, although the Russians came in very handy, uh, I seem to remember during the Second World War, you know, when um, when. Uh, you know, and, and came to our, you know, our aid. I mean, the Russians were, you know, lost an awful lot of men um, during this, as, 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 as we know. Um, so sort of our, I sometimes want, and also I, my, I don't know what your thought is, Nick, but my belief is that the Cold War never really ended. It was, it sort of um, has been deliberately put there uh, for various people's interests you know, which is that let, let's keep Russia sort of at a distance, you know, all there. They, but actually, Russians are very, very, because they're, you know, they're, the eagle looks east and west. They are, if they, if anything, very European. And I don't mean that in the EU sense. I mean that in the, the good sense that they have. We share a lot culturally with the Russians. Um, and people don't, don't always remember that. Yeah, well, we, we always need an enemy. It's, how, it's one, of, one of the ways how you control... The population every dictator does it saddam hussein you know uh colonel Gaddafi. everybody needs an enemy because if you you want your people looking out because there's nothing to look out at they look in which means they look at you and you don't last much longer yeah exactly exactly and we're all uh, as we're seeing at the moment you know there's uh there's um yeah i mean just 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 the i mean it does it does worry me the ramping up of this of, of the war um I remember, I remember somebody on question time saying um uh i think it was constantin actually we because i thought i mean he's he's great i do like um constantin kissing but he said um that he compared which i thought was slightly unwise putin to hitler because he thought that hitler's that, that putin, sorry putin's aim was to go into eastern europe was actually to go further and to go into poland and czechoslovakia and i can say categorically even though i obviously haven't had any conversations with putin that's not his aim that's not his aim it's to keep basically the americans is to keep the americans and un off away from the russian border essentially but whatever you think of putin you know he's 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 bad he's not mad he's bad as david starkey says <laughs> <laughs>